All right, in this tutorial, we're going to have a crash course in learning the pen tool in Adobe Illustrator or Photoshop or any other program that uses vector graphics with a pen tool and learning all the ins and outs and how you can master that in no time. So follow along. All right, now I'm gonna be doing this demoing inside of Adobe Illustrator, but you can really use any vector graphics like Photoshop because the concepts are the same. So I'm gonna first start off and just look at a couple of the basics with the pen tool. So over here you can see there's a couple of different types of pen tools. We're gonna to be using the basic pen tool for all of our demos. So just go ahead and select the pen tool for P and the pen tool works by creating what are known as anchor points. So anytime you single click, it will create an anchor point and that is tied to the next click. So if I come over here and click again, that's an anchor point, that's an anchor point. And as soon as you have three, it's gonna automatically sort of fill the inside. But you can kind of come around and just click, 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 click. And the way you finish a shape is you hover back over the original point and you'll see that you get this little circle that appears on your pen tool. That means you're going to complete the path. So next time I click, you'll see that it completes that path and I now have a new shape. So I can grab this shape and move it around and manipulate it as I want. Now there's two types of arrows inside of Photoshop and even Illustrator. They have different names. I think the nomenclature and the naming between them and the various Adobe programs is silly because they're not consistent. Uh, so I just call them the white arrow and the black arrow. So the black arrow allows you to manipulate entire Photoshop shapes as a unit. The white arrow, you can see it's called the direct selection tool. It allows you to manipulate individual anchor points. So you can see right here, if I single click and I come into this object, I've got all sorts of anchor points. And if I get the white arrow tool, I can hover over an individual anchor point. And as soon as I single click it, it will turn blue. The other ones have this white shape. This means that I'm only actively working on this anchor point. And I can just individually move that single anchor point. And you can kind of see how that manipulates the shape. So I can come over here and click on this one and I can manipulate this one. If you hold down your shift key, you can select multiple anchor points. So if I hold down shift, I can click on this one, this one, and this one. So all three of those. And then notice now I can move all three of those as a group or a unit. So that's what the white arrow tool allows for is individual manipula individual anchor point manipulation. Uh, now, if we, I'm gonna delete this little shape here. So I'll get my black anchor, black arrow tool and I'm just gonna select that and hit delete. I'm gonna grab my pen tool again. Now this time when I click and I come over here for my second click, instead of single clicking, I'm gonna click and hold. So when you click and hold, this allows you to create a bendy curve, if you will. Notice how in this instance right here, I have created a anchor point that has two handles. So notice there's one up here with a circle and there's one down here with a circle. So these are called Bezier handles. It's B-E-Z-I-E-R. I think it's a French word actually, um, but that's what those are called. So this anchor point is not a corner anchor point. It's a, it's a rounded anchor point. So I can come over here and click and hold my mouse button again. So I'm just clicking and bending in specific directions to sort of create this nice organic shape. And then I'll come back over here and click to finish it off. Now, just like before, I can get my white arrow tool and I can come in here and manipulate individual anchor points. This time, however, when I click on an anchor point, notice how I'm seeing the Bezier handles too. So not only can I grab the anchor point and move it, I can also grab these individual handles and move them as well. Now there's a few modifier keys that you can hold down to manipulate this in interesting ways. So if you hold down the option key and you click a handle and bend, notice how it's only moving one side of the handle. The top handle is not being manipulated, just the bottom handle. So holding down option will allow you to sort of manipulate one at a time, whereas before they, would, they were connected, if you will, okay? So you can sort of do that. Now, if you wanna take a uh, anchor point that is that or uh, rather, uh, yeah, I said that correctly, an anchor point that has Bezier handles. For example, let's select this one down here. So this one has two Bezier handles. Let's say I wanna convert it to a regular, a, a hard corner um, anchor point. Well, you can come in here and there is a tool, and this depends on if you're in Photoshop or Illustrator, um, but there is a convert, it's this one right here under the pen tool. Notice how it's called the anchor point tool. So if you select this one and you come in here and single click, it will turn that smooth back into a hard edge. So this no longer has any Bezier handles. 
And if you want to go the opposite direction, you just click an anchor point and then pull out the handles like this, and then you can add them back in. So for example, this initial point does not have any Bezier handles. If I want them, I can just click it with this tool active and then pull them out. And now it does have the Bezier handles. So that specific tool, the anchor point tool allows you to add and remove those Bezier handles from your vector graphics. Okay. Now, as a general rule of thumb, when you're working with the pen tool and you're creating, whoops, let me go back and grab the pen tool, and you're creating shapes, you want to use as few anchor points as possible. So a lot of times, for example, I'm going to come over here to this graphic right here. So here I have a picture of this outline of obviously a dog here. And let's say I want to convert this into a vector graphic. So I need to trace it out. Uh, it's tempting to start out to kind of go, okay, I'm going to create one here and I'm going to click here and bend and I'll click here and bend and click here and bend and click here and bend. And you'll see this quite often with people who are starting out uh, using this tool is they just create way, way, way too many points as they're going along, right? So I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. There's all sorts of points. You want to use as few as possible, okay, when you're creating these shapes. So I'm going to come back to this one in a second. But to demonstrate this, I'm going to come to this second sample here. So this is just a little picture of a tooth, a little illustration here. And the reason why I'm using this is because I think it works well for demonstrating how to use not so many anchor points. So I'm gonna grab my uh, pen tool here. I'm gonna switch over, I'm gonna turn off my fill and I'm gonna turn on my stroke. So I'm just gonna select a red color here uh, so you can see this. In other words, as I'm working, you'll be able to see a red outline. In fact, maybe I'll turn that up a little bit here uh, so you can see that. So I'm going to crank up the stroke to like five points. There we go. So you can see that a little bit better. Okay, so the general rule of thumb is you want to create anchor points wherever there is a peak or a valley. Okay, that's the spot where you create anchor points. And I'm going to demonstrate this two different ways. So the first way, I'm simply going to just single click. So I'm going to create, I'm kind of looking right here. I'm going to say there's obviously a peak. So I'll create one there. And there is a valley. So I'm going to create one there. There's a peak. Notice I'm not bending them. I'm just doing hard anchor points. So there's one. I'm going to go fairly quickly here. It looks like maybe there's one and maybe there's one and there's one. There's one. This one's kind of tricky to see if there's maybe one right there. We'll go there, there. And we may have to adjust this after the fact. That's fine. We're just going to kind of roughly do this. So I'm just creating these points wherever I think there is a peak in a valley or the topmost or innermost portions right there and then we'll go back to our main one right here okay so i've created anchor points and notice there's not very many anchor points so now what i'm going to do is i'm going to go grab my anchor point tool and i'm going to start pulling out bezier handles so for this one i'm going to pull them out like so and we'll just kind of roughly guesstimate here and this one i'm going to pull in a little bit and this one will pull as well so I'm just trying to get basically the shape here. And this one I'm going to pull out this way. This one I'll pull in a little bit. This one I'm pulling in a little bit. And you can see just by creating those anchor points in the peaks and valleys, I'm able to fairly easily create uh, this shape. So I'm just going to take me one more quick second here. And we'll just about be there. Whoops, pulled that one the wrong way. And two more. So we'll pull this one kind of in a little bit. Okay, so there's kind of the rough shape. And then you can always, whoops, it looks like I messed both of those up down there. Um, but you can come in here with your white arrow tool and kind of, you know, then start to further manipulate these. So I can drag this handle in a little bit or out a little bit if it's too much or too little. This one I can pull up a little bit. This one I did completely wrong, right? That one's actually reversed. It was supposed to be like that. And same with this one. I wasn't paying attention when I was going. That one's upside down. So you can just come in here and start to manipulate this, right? And now, without too much work, I've created a fairly organic shape uh, with this little uh, guy. So that's kind of the gist of the anchor point tool. So now I'm going to do it a second time. I'm going to delete this one and let's grab the pen tool and do it again. So while you can work that way, I prefer to work and sort of create the shapes as I'm going. So what you can do is again, it's the peaks and valleys. So I'm going to click here and drag a little bit and then I'm going to come down here and you can kind of see 
Illustrator gives you these little hints. It'll kind of bend the curve according to how far you pulled it out. So I can come in here and click and bend. And it's definitely a bit of practice to kind of get the feel, you know, of kind of how this tool is going to work. So as you click and bend, right, you can kind of see how much or how little you're manipulating the shape. And you can just kind of come and work around. So again, you're trying to stay on those same peaks and valleys. And you just kind of work around and organically bend the shape with this tool as you're going. And you'll start to get the hang of it to where you can go fairly quickly and, you know, get the basic shapes in place. So this one will come clear down here. So without too much trouble, I can kind of come around here and get the basics of that shape. Actually, this one I'm probably going to have to pull in right there. Maybe I'll be able to do this one in one stroke like so. And there we go. So you can see now I've just outlined that there's a there's a little bit of a trouble down here where you can see I wasn't as smooth where there's kind of a bit of a bump. So then you come down in here and you grab this tool and you sort of manipulate that a little bit and smooth that out and pull this in or out however you need to smoothen those out. And that is how you can work with the pen tool to create your organic shapes. So uh, just like I mentioned, if you ever have a hard edge, I'm going to come over here to this dog now. And I'm just going to do the back side of the dog because this will show you how you can then use your modifier tools. So if I've got my pen tool here and I want to same thing, I want to trace this. So I'll just click here and I'm not going to try to follow the contour perfectly here. We'll just kind of quickly do this as I'm kind of pulling up the dog's tail. So right here is a problem, right? Where I'm getting to the top, I can't click and pull a handle because if I wrap around the loop like this, that's going to create a problem. So I need this to be a hard anchor point. So I just did Command Z there. And so what I can do is when I get to this point, I can click and then I can hold down the option key. OK, so option on the keyboard and I can move in and then click that anchor point. And notice it just deletes the right handle and turns that into a hard edge. So then I can switch directions and come back down in this way nice and organically and continue along. So that's kind of a really nice trick for uh, working with the pen tool. So here's another problem, right? Where I created this big handle to get that curve. But now if I come down in here, I can't, I can't make that turn, right? So I've got to hold down Option, come in here, click that to delete that right hand uh, curve. And then I can come down in here and continue working along. So a lot of times, you know, using that Option key to, you know, create one side. And there you kind of go. There you can see that where we have those hard turns where something turns like 90 degrees or inverts or something like that. Hold down the option key and that allows you to get rid of the handles as you're going along with the vector tool, pen tool. So that's a couple of the basics on working with the pen tool and creating these nice organic shapes. It's an excellent tool to learn how to do uh, selections. One of the best uh, sort of samples that I like to use when working with the pen tool is a car. So let's say you have a picture of a car and you want to isolate that car or create a selection around that car. Uh, you can use Photoshop and try to do all these, you know, raster based selection tools. But the best way is just to get the pen tool because it has this nice flowing shape to a car. They have very few uh, corners and they have this organic shape. So the pen tool is the best tool for actually making selections around things like that. So I hope you learned a tip or trick about using the pen tool. Uh, if you have any tips or tricks on your own, post them down in the comments so others can learn. Like, subscribe, share, all that good stuff, and we will see you in the next one.